It's a. How are you? Sorry, we're a little late. <laughs> That's okay. I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm. I wasn't. I wasn't thinking. You are a ball of energy, Miss Stockwood. Holy I'm cow! I'm just like driving myself nuts today. We she just, just walked in the studio like two seconds, two seconds ago, and it's just a bu- buzzing. And all I haven't around. eaten, and I'm like, I'm, someone in the building right now is getting me some sugar to calm me down. That'll calm me down. You just ran over here from uh, the lovely Vicky Gabro show. We just show. hate Vicky Gabro. She was a joy, and um, it was interesting. You'll have to watch on Monday. There was some interesting little moments, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, uh, that's all I'll say. Well, like what happened? Come on, oh, tell no, us. Th- um, what happened? Oh, we did a really nice closer where I um, sang, uh, "I want you to want me." <laughs> I was doing it in rehearsal and they said that's great you want to close the show with that I'm like what I don't really even know the words but we just we did it and uh, it was fun hilarious and, uh, yeah and there's all kinds of lovely moments I was talking about the wrestling the wrestling's re- here tomorrow night yeah and yeah. and we just had a, a fellow meeting you in our, our lobby he was here to meet Eagle Eye Cherry on Monday as well and he bears a striking resemblance to Stone cool. Steve Stone Cold oh, Steve Austin Steve, I know and I just saw him and he had the shirt on and I go are you going to the, are you going to the show tomorrow night because I have such a crush on the rock oh my god really and I'm from the rock yeah Holy cow! What a you weird know what? Thing. It, it's it's kind of like I have Chris Shepard here. I just hit a button, press. <laughs> oh, is he that hyper too? He's he's that wired. You I've press. Never met him. You press play, and then um, it just goes. Are you finding okay, out where your headphones plugged in? Oh, where is it? Number one. Sure, press oh, number one. Oh, I turned it down because there was music there. I was like, oh, that can't be right. No, you hearing it all now? Look at this lovely girl from Emi giving me a Coca Cola. Love it. Okay, Kim Stockwood with the album <laughs> Twelve Years Old. I'll calm down. From Newfoundland, yeah. here in Toronto or here in Vancouver. I see. Now you've got me I've all. I've got you all frazzled. Don't I have some Coca Cola? No, that's fine. Okay. I was going to ask you, what's now that you live in Toronto? What's the one thing you wish that Toronto had that Newfoundland has? Um, more pubs. Not enough pubs in Toronto. There's a lot of pubs, but they're like really spread out. In Newfoundland, they're on one street. <laughs> yeah, because Newfoundland, the whole kind, the whole province has one street. Right? It's, yeah, right. You got to go there, and then you won't think that, man. Yeah. Which, which town in Newfoundland are you from? City. Um, I'm from outside St. John's. A uh, place called Mount Pearl, but I grew up in St. John's. How can you remember for the for those of us who grew up out here? How can you remember which one has St. John and which one has St. John's? because uh, uh, Newfoundland has got the S. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. You know, I got really mad once because I, I was getting a flight home from Toronto and it said St. John Newfoundland. That wasn't good. No, it wasn't no. good. No, you. Yeah, you proud just gotta people. go visit them. Newfoundlanders yeah. are proud people. We certainly are. And you know, a new st- survey just came out. You have more sex than any other province in Canada. That's Newfoundlanders because we drink more too. Oh, God. <laughs> What's That's so bad? That's on the air, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. What's the one thing you wish that Newfoundland had that Toronto has? Um, let's see. Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Newfoundland has all it needs. Yeah. Where do you like living yeah. better? Um, well, I re- I'm really loving Toronto right now. I've got a life there, and uh, I- I'm lucky. I get to go home to Newfoundland like four or five times a year. Really? I, I have done some shows there, and um, uh, yeah, there's always lots of reasons for me to go home. And all my family's still there, so I, I make a point of using my points, my airplane points, to get home as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I want to talk about your music. Yes, sir. We'll talk about the first thing that made you a big, huge international superstar, which was that jerk song. That jerk song. Sing along. Is that, Come on. Is that the way people just... Oh, you're that that jerk song yeah, it's, lady. No, it's usually like uh, um, every... Like there's some people, believe it or not, or don't know me, lots of people actually, and uh, they'll say, what do you do? And I'll go, oh, I'm a singer. And they'll go, really? You know, like prove it. And um, I'll go, you jerk, you jerk, you're so jerk. And they'll go, oh my God, I love that song. <laughs> you know, so that, but lately I was telling someone today that um, I've actually gone, um, you know, I got a song out now, it's called, because I feel like I'm 12 years old and my dog, and they just go, and my dog just out of my bike's been stolen again. And they know it now. So I'm making the leap. Holy cow. That's good. Can I play the jerk one first and then we'll talk about Absolutely. the 12 years old one? Absolutely. All right. Kim Stockwood. Still love it. Jerk. Live on Z95.3. Jerk face. Today's best music, Z95.3. Kim Stockwood and Jerk, and oh. she's she's here with us. I am. We were just talking about your uh, manager who came about after you had that song out. and what Mr. Sort of, Bruce Allen. What sort of things does Bruce Allen have in common with the song Jerk? <laughs> I can say that because I know he's listening. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. What does he have in common with it? Um, I don't know. He probably uh, he 
He probably comes across a few in his job for sure. He's been in this business for a long time. So what's it like having the the person responsible for making Brian Adams one of the biggest rock stars in Canadian music history um, behind you, pushing you to that it, same sort of superstardom? It's, it's very, very cool. He's uh, he's a good guy. And um, you know what? Every artist is different. I mean, obviously, I'm not Brian. And uh, uh, the bottom line is I think that uh, you know, Bruce works with strong people and strong artists. I mean, it's such a varied roster. You know, Anne Marie, me, Connelline Crush, Brian, Martina McBride. But um, you know, I, I think one thing that that all the acts have in common is that they're uh, pretty strong people and focused. And uh, you know, he certainly pushes you to be that. That's for sure. Well, something you're just mentioning, and I, I'm still trying to wrap my brain around, is your fascination with for professional wrestling. Well, see, I don't really. It's just I'm I'm fresh out of the the Gabbro show where, you know, she said the WWF guys are going to be on the show tomorrow, and um, and The Rock is coming in, and uh, you know what? I don't know, but uh, he's a new breed of a wrestler for me. He's like he's but, an entertainer. He's a t- true charmer. Now, when you say new breed of wrestler, you you sound like you've been following it since the days of Bad News Allen <laughs> you know what's and the, the Dynamite weird thing? Kid. Like I, 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 it's funny, but I, you know, I usually say that I'm not like a big wrestling fan or anything. But when I grew up, my father watched it all the time, and like it used to be on the TV, and I was like, "What is this? Is this for real? Is what is this crazy stuff?" But I mean, Bruce manages Bret Hart, so I was just gonna say, you know, I this just is, started to turn my ear to it again. Recently. This isn't the question I thought I'd be asking you today, but <laughs> how did you feel when Bret Hart left the <laughs> WWF to join the WCW? <laughs> he had to do what he had to do. That's all I'll say. Yeah, but uh, you know, I won't say I'm a huge wrestling fan, but you know. I, I, I'm a very varied person. I can uh, I can appreciate all kinds of things. I love classical music, too. Holy cow. <laughs> Have another sip of your okay. caffeine-infected you. juice, Miss mm-hmm. Stockwood. Now, this, the song, 12 years old, came out of a songwriting camp. Yeah, in now, um, Devon, England. People go to summer camp, but songwriters go to you songwriting camp? You know what? It's very, very similar. It, it is a summer camp for songwriters to make them better. And the beautiful thing is, is that a lot of the writers that are there are really established writers. Um, that have had huge hits. I mean, Graham Goldman was there from 10CC who wrote, uh, The Things We Do For Love, you know, kind of huge. For love, love. Like, like walking in, in the I'm not- rain. <laughs> Never mind, you're good, see? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it's it's a really incredible thing. And, you know, I was one of the newer writers that was there. There was a few other people who, who you know, were, weren't in the business as long, like myself. And uh, you basically write with two different people every day. And you have to complete a song a day. And uh, one day... Um, the two people I were writing with, um, we wrote, and uh, we wrote 12 Years Old. And now, it was it, written like half an hour. What, now, did this come from your experience, or was it part and parcel of the other two people you're writing e- with as well? Everybody in that room. When we walked in, me and this other girl, um, we walked in to the, the guy Peter Vitesse's room where we were starting to write, and he had already started the melody, and he had started to write the first couple of lines. And we didn't really know what it was about, but we we knew it was kind of happy, sad, and uh, which is life. And... Uh, we, we basically just kind of talked it through and said, okay, when, when are you the most vulnerable in your life when your kid and your dog dies, you know? And that never really changes in your life, no matter how old you are. Wow. You have moments of that. I've had a couple today already. Well, and, and it's just like the your song Jerk that spoke to everybody. You seem to have tapped into it again with this one. You know what? I, I mean, the biggest compliment is that um, you can write something that a lot of people can relate to. And and I'm, I'm a very um, a basic writer, I, I say that. I'm not trying to demean my writing or anything, but I really like to make things as simple as possible, you know? And uh, I mean, it's just who I am, you know? I'm not, I'm not like a Leonard Cohen writer. I, I would love to be sometimes, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm a very basic writer. And... Uh, it's great. It's really great. This song, you know, has just gone top ten in Canada, and uh, there's a, a whole bunch of versions of it. I don't know if you've heard the Broom Tang mix. Yet. Yeah, I've seen yeah. the video. It's yeah. pretty wild. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's very good, and uh, it's just I think the power of a really good song. You can do a lot of different things with it. So we're gonna do a classical version next, instrumental. Wow, and I love I, you know, and your whole album is full of um, personal speak to each and every person kind of songs. The song "Soap" talking about your life being a soap opera, <laughs> and I'm a big Y and R fan too. <laughs> What is it with me? I'm going to sound like such a little, I don't know what. Oh, man. Thank you very much for coming by today, Thank Kim you. Stockwood. I'm sorry if I scared you. I just haven't eaten today. No, and I'm just kind of wound No up. problem. You know what? We'll look for you in the right ringside tomorrow night. <laughs> no, I'm actually Saturday. I'm not going to the show. You're not going to go to the wrestling? No, I don't think so. I don't know if maybe Bruce can get me tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in the front row. <laughs> yeah. Kim Stockwood, 12 years old on Z95.3. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.